my brothers and sisters of the order, welcome back to the order. And yes, we are going back into another Wild West history video, but as well, we're also going to be talking about a historical firearm. Now, I decided to put this both in the history of firearms and as well in Wild West Wednesday, because this gun entirely has been seen throughout many Western films and Wild West history. Now, one major thing we have to understand is that the Sharps rifle is probably one of my favorite out of all these old-fashioned firearms, especially. Reason being, it fires a heavy-duty round, and its which is heavier than the modern-day 4570 government-issue bullet. 4570 issue government bullet is this, that of which is meant for hunting. These bullets are nothing compared to the bullet that fired from the Sharps, of which this is old black powder, ladies and gentlemen. And in fact, even the old paper model cartridges that they were known to have had were extremely heavy duty. Now, our major estimate that these type of guns were pretty much first designed in 1848 by a Christian Sharps, and is which started production somewhere around 1850 to 1881. Now, it's actually estimated that in 1861, this would have cost at least $30. Now, that sounds cheap, but here's the thing. $30 back then is technically the estimated amount of $950.65. That is a lot of money today. And still, this gun is incredible to its form. Now, we have to understand, though, that its weight is around 9.5 pounds, and its total length is around 47 inches. However, it depended on the said rifle. Because of the fact there were even carbine models that were used by the cavalry or U.S. cavalry in history. But I'll get to that very soon when it comes to its history. Now, we also have to understand that it, the total amount that was made was over at least uh, 100,020 well, type made. Or in this case, 120,000. So that's a lot. But we do know that it's a, fall, a falling block. If you don't know what it means by falling block, the term falling block means that it's a lever design system. Meaning, you open the said lever system, put the bullet in, close the lever, and it's ready to fire. Now, it actually has a, uh, well, rate of fire would be around uh, 8 to 10 rounds a minute. So, think that one through. The muzzle loaders at the time, a shooter could only get 3 around three perfect shots off a minute, so this is doubling that effect by tr or tripling the effect, if you think about it. So, this gun was entirely incredibly fast. As well, its muzzle velocity was somewhere around 1,200 uh, feet per second. Its effective range of fire would be around 500 yards, and its maximum firing range would be around 1,000 yards. That is a long type of, well, type of shot you can think about. That's over a football a dozen football fields if you think about it. So if this thing was technically a sniper rifle at the historical time, and many people say black powder firearms aren't good, hmm, uh, they were wrong. Now, during the time in history, it's actually stated that sometime after 1800s, or sometime during the 1800s, I should say, especially during the 1867, is when most of the time, the Sharps rifles started to take cartridge models. Prior, before the Civil War, they only took paper models. The way you actually were to first load this gun was the following. First, you open up the lever action, tape your caper cartridge, place it in, then close the said pan, of which will end up cutting off the part of the bullet. In doing so, you pretty much also just, well, just like how humans actually were to bite the said paper cartridge in order to load a muzzle loader. Then, what you would do is also pull back the hammer, put on the percussion cap, pull it all the way back, and fire. That is actually historical to how cool these guns were. Now, what we do know is, is that in historical form in history, by the time the casing models came out, all you had to do was open up the pan, put in the bullet, close the pan, pull back the hammer, and fire. Simple as that. Now, I want to put this out here, there were historical soldiers in history during the American Civil War that also were known to have used this firearm. They were known as Brendan Sharpshooters. In other words, these guys were Yankees, who of which used this said firearm in order to fight against the Confederacy. However, there was a historical type of incredible marksmanship that you had to fire this gun. One, this was a major training module that of which I like to dare any modern sniper to try this. Now, the way you would have done this, is you would have done this completely without a scope. Now, 
into Unso, you had to shoot at least 200 yards. That's at least two football fields away from a said target. The target was the size of a dinner plate. And in fact, you had to hit the center of the target, at least five inches from the center of the target, to actually be effective as a sharpshooter. But you had to get 10 rounds in that said area. And you only had 10 rounds. Meaning, this was incredibly hard. In fact, when it came to doing this, one major thing that the sharpshooters had to do is that they had to fire the gun an incredible type of amount of, well, distance. And the major thing is, you only had a small area. So, I like to dare any modern sniper or any marksman today and say they're the greatest marksman. Here's the thing, I like to dare you to fire this gun and actually see if you can do the same thing. Get to all 10 rounds in a small target the size of a dinner plate and hit only 5 inches from the center. That is not the easiest thing to do. In fact, this is actually probably one of the most hardest uh, type of challenges that Union sharpshooters ever had to get. And the thing is, that's because it was. Union forces actually were stated to have had these guys, and these guys would have worn, well, the historical green coat. As well, I've had heard that uh, some people in Red Dead Redemption 2 have actually uh, done this as well for historical purposes, which I kind of do like that look. Now, we also have to understand that these guns were not just used by the Union, but even by the Confederates, especially known as the Confederate Hornets. These guys were known as the, well, Southern Sharpshooters. These guys were as well stated to have taken these guns from either dead Yankees or dead Union sharpshooters, or as well have bought them with their own money. In fact, during the American Civil War, they were actually seen on both sides. One major thing about this gun was that it was actually mostly a paper cartridge use. So in other words, it didn't matter if you needed to actually, uh, well, use paper cartridges from a muzzle loader because you could still use a muzzle loader to put them in the gun. And in fact, this gun had a firing rate of, well, 8 to 10 shots per minute. So, it didn't matter if you hit something. But the major thing is, I want to put this out here that many people are probably going to ask me, Templar, why were the sharpshooters the only one who got these guns? Kind of obvious. These guns were entirely expensive because of its design model. However, if you think about it, it was a lot, would have been a lot better for the Union to have their soldiers probably have this gun in order to end the war slightly quicker. In fact, it would have been probably yes, but, uh, well, seeing as though some historical armies have were known to have used breech loaders in history, have also gotten their own asses kicked in history as well. So, I don't think it would be easy for said United States Army to actually issue this to every soldier. In fact, only a couple hundreds or dozens could have actually done so. However, the Sharps rifle wasn't just used by the Sharps shooters, but as well the Sharps carbine was used also by the U.S. Cavalry. However, U.S. Cavalrymen were stated to have used the said Cavalry carbine as a type of weapon in order to, well, best to shoot from afar. This gun was actually still being used by the U.S. Cavalry up until sometime after the American Indian Wars, or the, well, Great Wars in the Native American Plains as we know it today, such as the Battle of Little Bighorn is one of the major examples. In fact, some of these guns were actually seen there, and not the historical, well, breech-loading uh, Springfield carbine, or Springfield trapdoor. However, Union started to switch on more of that after a while, stating that these guns were kind of useless. However, you gotta admit, this gun was a little better than this car, than any of the, uh, well, Springfield guns, especially in my opinion. Now, the Sharps rifle was also not just used by both the Confederate and Union forces, but also by used by Native Americans. They were as well even used by farmers, uh, cavalrymen, and pretty much also frontiersmen, and including buffalo hunters. Buffalo hunters were stated to have gone, well, a little bit of hunting. Oh, God! What the? How to get it? Grant! Oh. This is why I really hate Grant. Oh. Yes, as you can see, the Buffalo Hunters would have gone a little too far. In fact, it's actually stated that President Grant had once issued to the said Buffalo Hunters that they have every right to shoot at least for whatever type of amount of buffalo, stating that they grow up like prairie dogs, when in truth, he's never even been to the Great Plains. 
and of which this is why there is actually a very massive lacking of said type of animals known as a great buffalo or a great bison. And as well, we can even see this in the game Red Dead Redemption 2, especially when uh, Charles, I think his name was, apparently, uh, well, gets mad at the buffalo hunters. And in fact, that's actually what these type of good people would have done. They would have killed the bison and such. For every bison person kills, this is a major war and such for every bison. In fact, it's actually stated that when the, well, Great Plains was being westernized by the United States, that the United States government, especially President Grant, actually issued an order or district type attorney to actually issue a type of verdict, stating that every man or woman or child especially can have the chance to actually shoot a bison and gain another, well, $20. That is actually a lot of money back then, as we all know. And in fact, $30 could easily get, well, in today's money was around... 950 bucks. However, back then, it was a little bit lower than that, but still, we got a measure of how extreme that is. So, 15 to 20 bucks, depending on, well, how many you kill. So, for each head, that would technically be a lot. And, yeah. Buffalo hunters went as well a little too far and near the extinction of the said buffalo. In fact, it's actually stated that many bison were actually killed along the railway systems, of which they were stated to have had many of these buffalo hunters all around the area. Buffalo hunters actually used this gun in order for hunting use, and as well, so did frontiersmen, in order to survive. In fact, there are many famous historical icons in history, such as Bat Masterson and so many others, that actually use this firearm for a different purpose. Hunting humans. That's right, they actually use this on human beings, so it was not not the prettiest thing to think about. But one thing we also have to understand is that when human beings, especially farmers, frontiersmen, had to defend their homes, especially against, well, uh, technically any animals, or including that of human beings, they would perfectly go with this gun. In fact, in many Western films, we could always see this gun, not a Henry Raffle. Reason being is because this gun was an impressive sniper rifle at the time. You could easily shoot a person at least over two football fields away if you were a great shot at it. In fact, it's not the gun's fault, it's the human's fault. But yes, this gun was stated to have been one of the most impressive type of guns in history. But one of my favorites is always going to be this gun, especially in history books, especially to the fact it technically can shoot a person like nothing in this day. And it fires a heavy bullet compared to the 4570 government. So... We can understand. In fact, there was even the 5070 government that it was once issued with the full casing model. However, it was later downgraded to the 4570 because of the recharge of which it fires. But the original 52 model government was actually a paper cartridge model that it once fired. So, the original, you gotta admit, was a little more dangerous. However, even in the Americas, it was also stated to have even been gotten its hands into many people in history such as that of, well, even parts of South America and including Canada. This gun was actually used by many Canadian police and including that of many Hispanic military groups down in Mexico and parts of South America and Central America. And we can even see or hear about this gun actually being used in Pancho Villa's war in Mexico, especially when it came to a fact of killing a high individual in history. However, these guns were actually mostly famous by the use of the Union Army, especially when they came to killing, said, some commanders in U.S. history. This could easily be seen when it came to Confederate General Wallen Hill, who of which was shot directly in the head by a said Union sharpshooter, who was hiding in a tree line. It stated that when this shot actually hit him, it stated that the Confederate Army actually withdrew, especially incredibly quickly, when the sharpshooter kept opening up fire on Confederate forces. So, entirely, the U.S. kind of made a good gun. Problem is, this gun is later not remembered in history. Though I have heard many gun enthusiasts, and including many Wild West lovers, actually love this gun infestually. I've only fired this gun once for reproductional use, and we've actually done this back when it was historical uh, type event, but the gun is especially incredible to that form. In fact, the Sons of Veterans and the soldiers of the Union Army have actually done reenactments, have actually covered this gun in history. 
However, I as I stated, I like to dare any modern sharpshooter that states they can't hit a target two football fields away with this gun. I like to dare them to see and they can do it themselves all without a scope. That's right, this gun would have either been fired with a scope or without. However, during the American Civil War, especially during the early parts of the Civil War, this gun hardly had a scope at all. And the whole horrifying part is, this gun was incredibly horrifying. Now, in fact, it's actually stated that this firearm was actually seen and used at the Battle of Gettysburg, especially the Battle of Devil's Den, or the skirmish at Devil's Den especially, when these sharpshooters actually were cut off from their own allies. In doing so, when the Confederates surrounded them, it's actually stated that these men fought to the very end with these sharpshooting rifles. This is probably how many of these Confederate soldiers got their hands on these guns. However, I have heard that my grandfather, who fought for the 4th Texas Infantry, actually was stated to have captured one of these, and later have gotten captured at the Battle of Gettysburg. So, yeah, he got a good gun, but he ended up getting captured at Pickett's Charge. So, yeah. Still, though, you gotta admit, this would have been a pretty great gun to actually pass down. And in fact, many times over, many people in the frontiers were actually known to have held these firearms. Meaning, you may have gotten rid of a lot of money back then, but it was worth it to actually protect your family, and as well feed your family. In fact, these guns were especially perfect for one shot, one kill. And in fact, have actually been seen in parts of Africa as well. However, even some parts in Europe. Now, most of the time, hunters, especially today, still love this firearm because of its heavy bullet. In fact, many frontiersmen today, especially, or that of hog hunters today, I should say, especially around Texas, actually love this gun rather than rely on modern day firearms, especially. So, you can understand of how great this gun is, especially one shot is all you need. So, how heavy is this bullet? Let's just say if you shoot a bear, the bear is going to go down hard. So, entirely, this gun, you gotta admit, it's one of the most lost badass firearms in history. Anyways, guys, hopefully you all like this video. Like and subscribe for more. Also, click that bell button for more notifications when the next video comes up. Also, check out our Facebook, so that way you all can stay tuned for the next upcoming video. As well, we can also actually, uh, well, talk about any other Wild West history if you all want me to. Leave a comment down below. Or any firearm history, please let me know down in the comments below. And I'll be happy to get right to it. You know, it doesn't have to be of any type of model or anything. It can just be any type of firearm you want me to talk about. Anyways, guys, I've been Templar. Have a great day.